We're gonna continue on with the wiring on this car. And I wanted to, I got to a point where I wanted to, to uh, stop and make a video to show you guys how to do the injectors and maybe a few other sensors here and uh, just kind of go over and explain it. Uh, so last week we did the ignition coils, okay? We got those all wired up and wire loomed and it looks pretty good and everything's marked out and we got it all labeled uh, where it goes. And so today we're gonna do the uh, injectors and I'm gonna kind of go over uh, and explain how that's gonna work. So we're going to run it in batch fire because we don't have a cam signal, okay? We only have the crank trigger. So we gotta run it that way because we can't run sequential. Uh, it's gonna need to fire all the injectors per every three sparks, okay? I'm trying to make sure I don't make any mistakes in what I'm saying here. So, so on, the, on the fourth spark, we're gonna fire all the injectors, you know, cause obviously it's a four stroke engine and every, on the fourth stroke, it's gonna need fuel, okay? So the way it works is you're gonna be injecting fuel to the back of a closed valve, okay? So what's gonna happen is, is that it's gonna sit on the back of the valve before it opens. And then when it does open, air is gonna rush behind it and reatomize the fuel, okay? So yeah, you're not injecting the fuel when the valve's open to use the injector's ability to atomize the fuel, but you're relying on like airflow to reatomize the fuel. And the reason why that's not as efficient, like say around the idle range, is because you don't have a lot of air velocity coming in, okay? So your fuel is not gonna be as atomized. It's gonna, it's not gonna idle as good as it could if it was sequential, okay? So that's the way that works. Uh, I mean, it's just a, like you get a little less fuel efficient. Uh, it's really not gonna run any worse. It's gonna run the same. It's just gonna, it's gonna burn a little more fuel, okay? Uh, and we're also we're gonna, we'll lose the ability to individually change injector trim on each cylinder. Uh, like if you were to run EGTs and you, you had a hot cylinder and you wanted to add a little more fuel or a little less timing in that particular cylinder, you know, if you want to get really, it's, it's especially like if, you're, like if you're running a really high performance engine and those things matter, okay? Like when you're making a lot of power, a degree of timing can be the difference between your car melting a piston or not melting a piston, okay? But we're not doing that, okay? We're not really wringing this thing's neck. It's gonna make them 180 horsepower and that's a very forgiving range. So it's not that big of a deal, okay? So, and then the other thing is we're gonna be wiring up, I already started, um, the TPS sensor. This is a Jay-Z TPS sensor. Uh, uh, obviously, you see I've got the Pro, Tun Pro Tuners Intake, a Z Car Depot header. Okay, this is like their mid range, like I think it was like $299 for this header. Um, the Pro Tuners Intake. Uh, we're running the injectors I'm using. Uh, they're kind of overkill. These are 1,000 cc injectors. Uh, I was going to use these on the Jay Z. Okay, so. This fuel system I have on here is uh, capable of making like seven, 800 horsepower. Obviously we're not gonna be using in, in all of that. I'm gonna be getting different injectors, maybe some like 350 cc injectors would be plenty for this, okay? It'll still run because you can, like you can get it, those injectors to idle decent and it should, it should run fine, but we're only gonna use probably 20% of these injectors or maybe 15%, which you, you know, that's, my, it might create some drivability issues, but I'm only doing it to get it started. Uh, and then we'll switch them out later. Uh, the, uh, this intake, you gotta keep in mind that when you, if you do go with this intake, you gotta use this, the 60 millimeter injectors. So you want the longer ones. And if you get short injectors, you gotta get the little, um, the little hats that go on it to lengthen the injector. Otherwise your fuel rail will hit your thermostat housing. Okay. It's really close already. It does fit, 
but it's very close. So yeah, we're running all dash eight lines for the fuel system, all the way back to a uh, Dishworks 350 inline pump, Dishworks uh, eight, uh, DW2000 regulator. Um, and this is like, this is a return system. So uh, that, you know, using a return system should keep the fuel cool. You know, it's not like a deadheaded system to where fuel is sitting in the rail. It's always recycling the fuel. Okay, so we shouldn't run any into any issues with um, like heat soak. Uh, I still may build like a little shield under here to uh, keep the heat of the headers off the intake. It, you know, it would help. So uh, got a little temporary thing here. This is just for the IAT sensor. I'm gonna get a new, some three inch piping to do all that, but I just wanted to hook that up to get it so I can start the car and, um, you know, get some tuning started on it. So anyway, uh, so the way you wire inject the injectors is we're gonna wire each injector to one of the outputs on the e uh, ECU, okay? I'm using ECU Masters, the EMU Black. Uh, the ECU Master drives the uh, uh, the injectors on the low side, so it grounds them, okay? And you gotta run one to each output. You don't wanna like piggyback those because you could burn out your ECU. So when we run it in batch fire, we're gonna do all that in the ECU, okay? We're gonna tell the ECU that we wanna fire all these during the, you know, the, the, fourth, the fourth ignition event, basically. So after three ignition events, you squirt fuel. Three ignition events, squirt fuel. So that's the way that works, but we'll set that all up in the ECU, okay? So, and then the other side of the injector, we're gonna run to 12 volts, which I told you guys in the last video that we do have that, that wire here somewhere. I forget where it's at, but uh, we have a wire for that, or I'm gonna have to run a new one. I don't remember if I separated that or not, but. Anyway, it's 12 volt fused with the key on, okay? That's all it is, 12 volts fused, and then your, your ECU will ground each injector, okay? So we're gonna, I'll go ahead and wire it up and I'll kind of just show you how it looks. And then maybe I'll show you guys a few other sensors like the throttle position sensor, it uses three wires. Uh, this, is, this is a Jay-Z throttle position sensor. Uh, and that's just like a, a GM IAT sensor. And uh, yeah, I don't want to make this video too long. Um, it's already like eight minutes. So uh, let's get to wiring it and then I'll show you where we're at. All right, we got the uh, 12 volts uh, hooked up to all six injectors. So I, it doesn't matter which, which wire you use. You know, these are just solenoids and um, you can wire it, you know, 12 volts on this side, ground on this side, it doesn't matter. I like to keep them all the same. So I just pick a side, you know, I pick the uh, right side here and then run all those to my 12 volts. Uh, you know, I just use these butt connectors that have the um, glue in the uh, heat shrink and they work great. I've always used those and they, they, they do well for me. So, but you know, wire it up, whatever makes sense to you. You know, you get a lot, a lot of people will hate on wiring and all that, but you know, just do what makes sense to you. If you want to just solder it and heat shrink it, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, or get yourself some crimpers. Uh, I have a whole box of these connectors and they just work great for me. So, and you never have to worry about them coming out with that glue. So, all right, so we have the wire here, make it long enough for, to go to whatever you wanna, uh, like a relay, you can use a relay that comes off the ignition. When you turn the ignition on, you get 12 volts. Okay, and then again, we're gonna wire each individual uh, injector to a driver in the ECU, and then in, in the ECU, we're gonna batch fire them, okay? So let me grab, I'll show you guys, uh, the ECU master comes with this card, it's really nice, that shows you everything you, everywhere you wanna plug wires to. So let's take a look at this real quick. So as you can see, uh, you have uh, injector one, two, three, four, five, and six. This is on the uh, gray connector, which on the EMU black would be this connector here. 
okay? And we are also going to be using the onboard map sensor too. So I'm going to run a, uh, a tube off of the intake to the map sensor also for the map reading. Um, what else? So on the, in, I remember when I was talking to you guys about this, you know, I have, I, I ran it, uh, two are wired together, these two are wired together, and these two are wired together. So on ignition coils, it's a little different because you can run those, off, you can run as many off of your uh, one output as you want. You know, you could run up to like 12 cylinders if you wanted to because they're smart coils, so they don't draw a lot of current. All right, so I know it looks a little intimidating, you know, wires going everywhere, but uh, I assure you it all makes sense. And uh, so we have it all wired up. Um, technically, I could use all the same color wire and wire to any pin I wanted to in the ECU as far as the injectors go, but I'm gonna do it with colors and also with uh, putting it this, each cylinder in the right spot. Because you never know in the future, if I do add a cam sensor to this car, all we got to do is a couple things in the ECU and then we're full sequential. Okay, so I'm kind of making it future proof a little bit here. Uh, so yeah, I just made the wires long enough so that I know it's going to reach into the firewall. I'm obviously going to be cutting most of this off, but uh, yeah. And then this will run, basically, we'll bundle this all up. Okay, and then it's going to go over here into the uh, firewall grommet. ECU will be ma uh, mounted somewhere in this area. I'm not sure, but yeah, just make sure you have plenty of wire and uh, yeah, should be good to go. So uh, I'm going to end it here just because, uh, you know, this video is going to get long and I want to break it up into parts where, you know, once I pin the ECU, I'll maybe I'll do a video on that on actually you know, hooking up all the <clears throat> all the sensors we need, like the TPS, the IAT, uh, the oxygen sensor, the you know, pinning the plug or the uh, coils, pinning the injectors, all that, everything you need to get this thing started. Okay, so I'll make a separate video on that. Uh, you know, and then, like I said, it it doesn't really matter what ECU that you have; they all they all work very similar, and. Uh, you know, it, the concept is the same. So anyway, uh, and also once I get this thing running, I'm going to do a review on the uh, intake, you know, see how I like it, see how it works and all that. Um, the fitment is good um, and all that. But, you know, there's a few things that you're going to need to know about this intake. But like I said, <clears throat> this video was just focusing on wiring batch fire injectors. Okay. All right, guys, that's going to do it. Check you all later.